Hey everyone, I hope you are all doing well. Uh, this week is something a bit controversial in the art world. No, it's not Shark Week, but that will be a theme of today's piece. It's the Camera Lucida. This device allows the artist to superimpose a subject onto a work surface. Some look at this as cheating. Look, it's not cheating, it's a tool. Rembrandt used it as did other masters, and I doubt you would call them fakes. I'm not using a camera lucida today. I'm using a projector to demonstrate how it works. So I invite you to have an open mind and to flex your creativity. Now, thanks to everyone who has been supporting this channel, and I'll put a link to my Teespring store as well as other uh, contribution options in the description below. Or you can use this QR code here. Go ahead and give this video a thumbs up and click that notification bell so that you'll be alerted to new videos. Share this video with someone who you think might learn from these fundamentals. I'm Kendall Stump, and welcome to The Stump Project. Okay, so here we go. Shark Week. Uh, this is a poster um, of Jaws, and it's being uh, projected on this canvas. I have a, a mini projector, and I just took a little time and just uh, aligned it up with my canvas. Uh, odd look, odd aspect ratio. This is like a, a 12 by 24. Uh, so you may not have that. You may just have something, something else, a standard, uh, standard aspect ratio. Feel free to use that. It's about composition. So remember, like if we divide our canvas up into thirds, I put the horizon line on the top third. So just keep that in mind. Um, probably I'm not going to worry about the text in this one. This is mainly going to be how are we going to get the figure and the shark on here? How are we going to use this? How are we going to use this as a layout? How are we going to use this as a layout tool? Uh, so you just project it up here and now we're just, I just want to define the shapes because after that, it's just going to be me putting in color. Uh, so I'm using some uh, some raw umber and around. This is uh, from the Evergreen Collection. Uh, this is the number number eight from the Evergreen Collection from Rosemary and Co. Uh, it's a pretty big one, but this is a, a, a fairly good sized canvas. So I just want to cover you know as much paint uh, and as much area as possible with paint. So I just chose a larger brush. But you can use whatever size brush is is necessary for you. And so the objective obviously is to define your your area that you're that you're working with. I've already put a coat on my canvas. I don't know if you can tell if there's a sheen on here or not. Uh, I've already put a coat of of liquid on here and liquid this stuff is it just helps speed up the 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 drying time of oil paint so as you're doing this the objective is not to to trace in all of the details the objective is to get make sure you get in your proportions correct your placement correct and then afterwards and maybe even some a little bit of uh, value notes for example i know that i'm going to want the the bottom part of the canvas darker so i'm just going to scrub in a little bit of raw umber just to act as those visual cues use a um, off to the side over here i've got uh on my on my tablet i've got uh, a picture of this poster that I'm, I'm trying to recreate so i'm using a visual reference uh, once this projector uh, gets turned off uh, you don't leave it on throughout the entire painting process at least I don't it's not to say that you can't um, it's just it's I don't know uh, I, I find you're you're going to be distracted by trying to get all the colors uh, where exactly where they are and that's not what this is about this is about this is an extension of your style so when you do this I want you to be sure that you're that you do your style this is just a placement tool and then we know that there's a bit of a gradient. We know that it's darker down here. And it's a bit of a, of a gradient. As it comes up, it gets lighter and lighter. And we want to be sure that we put in... The horizon line. Something like that. We'll just soften this up just a little bit. But the top part, I'm not too worried about that's primarily just going to be titanium white and uh, 
and yellow, some yellow ochre. Just a little bit of it, not a lot. Uh, let's see, we know we've got some, we're gonna have some shadow through here. Again, these are just visual cues at this point. Uh, when you go in with your colors, uh, you'll, you'll figure these out at that point. I'm leaving a little bit of a, of a highlight there along the edge. Again, visual cue. You don't have to be uh, super detailed, super accurate with this. And this, we, we see that the, the darkness right here bleeds into, bleeds into the surface area over here. Now we know that the mouth area is a little bit darker. So I just wanna make sure that I make that distinction using a little lighter value. And you can go in with paper towel if you like and just wipe some of that off. Something like that. Now the, the, the mouth area, I'm gonna spend, there's a lot of detail in here. And I wanna make sure that I get the placement of the teeth accurate because this, that's what is kind of the focus on this piece. So you really wanna make sure that you get this, tell this story. Again, you're not tracing it to the point where you're doing all the work right here. It, again, visual cues. You wanna know if this tooth goes this way, this tooth goes this way. And you wanna know that this mouth area is a bit darker than everything else. You can use a flat for this too, if you prefer. It might make some of, getting some of these edges in here a little bit better. And as we're actually putting in the color, we may switch to a flat, so. Now I'm using, I'm, I'm blocking everything in with raw umber because I know that it's going to help warm up uh, this painting a bit and um, it's gonna act uh, as an emulsifier. It's gonna bring all of the colors together to, to be a bit more uh, homogenous. So, and I really, really want that. The, the colors I put on here will mix with this raw umber and, and it will lend that hue to them. Okay, and then we have the figure up top, and you can clean this up, um, the edges up when you when you put it, when you block in the white. Just putting this in as a silhouette because you know it's it's easier to build light on top of dark than it is the other way around. Turned off the projector and now we're going to start putting in some color. Uh, again, we're gonna start with a, a little little darker. So this is uh, Prussian blue. And when I go in to put my highlights in or my lighter spots of the, of the water, um, it will mix with this Prussian blue and give us a little bit more of what we're looking for. Uh, Prussian blue and and raw umber along with all of the raw umber that's already on the on the on the canvas so it's a very very dark blue and i'm working on value even between here even before i start putting in my whites and you do that by just controlling the amount of paint that you that you're putting on the canvas i like to i tend to dilute my paint a little bit thin it down um, you you may find that that's not necessarily uh, needed, uh, especially when you have coated your canvas. This is one of the things that I'm learning. Uh, as you as you coat your canvas with liquid, it kind of already gives your surface a, a little bit of a opportunity for dilution. So if you get it too juicy, it, it becomes a little bit harder to work with. There we go. And we're just defining the shape and the form. Again, so you can see already the benefit of using a projector or even a, a, a camera lucida to, to do your layouts, to help you define your space. It's not a copying tool. You're not tracing, well, you're even tracing it to a point, but you're, you're, not, uh, you're, going for the, you're not going for the fine details um, that people make it out to be. And then half the time I think 
the people who are complaining about it are, are going at it or complaining about it without all of the information that's available to them and, and how, how this is how this tool is used. In the end, it's my brush strokes that are, are making up this piece of art. In the end, it's my choice to put highlights where the highlights need to be uh, to, to gradate things out the way I think that they should be graded to tell the story that I want to tell. So it gets frustrating and for any artist when they're told that certain tools that are at their, that are at their disposal are, are not legitimate. I'm just changing the flavor a little bit of this blue. I have a little bit of aquamarine I'm just adding to this. Just a, just a smidge. I plan on using the aquamarine later to mix with the, um, the, the raw umber. It makes a really, really nice dark black or really close to black. So I'm just changing a little bit of the flavor. And as the, especially as you get closer to the surface, the water may become, it may feel like it's a little bit more saturated in real life. Again, see, this is an example, I guess, of uh, I'm making my own decisions for color. This is my color choices. I'm not trying to make an exact duplicate or replica of this movie poster. I'm using it as a point of reference as a point of inspiration. And we know this appears to be lighter area too, so we don't want to go too crazy. Although we do want enough information, we do want enough information on here so that when we do apply the white, uh, it will pick up, uh, it will pick up the blue and, and give us the color variations that we want. A little bit of surface area there. I want to smooth this out just a little bit. I'm just using the side of my brush and just very, very lightly. I want some of those color variations to remain. I want some of those brush strokes to remain. When it comes to blending, this is the brush that I like to use. This is my number two uh, natural bristle brush from Bob Ross collection. I just find it is. The, the, the bristles are just so much softer than some of those other natural bristle brushes. It just gets much more of a much more of a refined blend. I think if you need to have some brush strokes, because the energy of this picture is going up, if you need to have brush strokes, I would have them going up. If you want to see any, I would have them going up. It's going to give that continuous motion. It's going to add to that that effect. Now we can come back in with the titanium white. Wipe it off uh, before you go back into it. You will um, you'll thank me later. I, if you not, if not, you're even after a few strokes, you can already see the 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 blue that I'm putting on here. If I continue to go down, it just gets darker and darker. And you can see on my brush, it's already contaminated. So before you go back and dip back into your wipe, take a moment, wipe that off. See if you keep going, you just end up getting too dark, and it's just not what you not what you want and think of the value. So we're gonna come down here. We know that, and if it's too bright when you put it on, you just keep working it. And the, the Prussian blue is such a powerful color, it will take it and eat it. It will just get rid of it for you. And if you have some problem with your paint sticking to your uh, to the paint underneath it, just thin it out a little bit. Use some use some odorless mineral spirits. Just a little bit. It doesn't take much. A thin paint will stick to a thin paint. Uh, I'm sorry. A thin paint will stick to a thick paint. And at this point, it's really just following your following your uh, your your point of reference. And again, I, I've said it before, it's, 
You paint what you see, not what you think you know. And you can see on here, as I put this white on, it, it's taking on more of that blue. So we get that blue hue that's in here. Adding to this color. And here, because we know that this kind of fades off into the, or wants to fade off into the background a little bit. So we're just going to give it a little bit of help. And, and uh, just using the color that's on our brush just to kind of fill out that space. You can definitely see how you can how easy it is to to capture a likeness and, I, and it's a greater understanding of why masters like like Rembrandt would would have chosen to use this tool. We'll start off with some side to side strokes to help blend this in just a little bit more because again I want those I want those final strokes to be vertical. Uh, this is a uh, um, and number four from Rosemary and Co. Just uh, I'm gonna start getting into the shark itself. Again, we're gonna start with uh, with some dark. Now I'm gonna start with the darkest darks, and that is almost black. And I'm going to take a, some time and hit this area. You see how much darker that is. And using some of these uh, these guides, I'm just gonna block in some of this color. Uh, so we know that the mouth comes here, and we know that this black comes dark shadow comes about down like that and the same on this side we know that the mouth comes around here something to that nature we'll, we'll go back in and we'll revisit some of these highlights and stuff this softens and gradiates in here and this lightens as it comes to the tip this down here is going to be a little bit more blue with the exception maybe some of this stuff right here right along the edge we want a nice contrast against the uh, the highlights all right then we have the stuff in the mouth and again, at this point, you'll probably you'll find that you're that you're still blocking in color. And again, you're not painting, you know, tooth for tooth. This is your shark. If your shark is some snaggletooth looking thing, then then so be it. Try to keep uh, perspective in mind as you do this. The angles, just think of the, the different angles of each of these teeth. little lighter and we're working in values from the from the darkest to the light and then you'll start some transitions or stepping you might see see it referred to as 
and that's where you're going from uh, you're stepping from one value to the next when you're when you're putting these you're, you're blocking in your color you're putting in your your steps and your values and all this be mindful of your brush strokes I mean brush strokes don't try to blend them out completely I mean they're, they're it's part of what helps make a, a painting different from a photograph there are some artists who are so talented that when they when they're painting they'll go into such detail that uh, you may as well have just taken a taken a photograph leave some leave some brush strokes it just adds to the life in the in the uh, in the character of the of the painting that you're putting your time and energy into leave some of you in it You know, there's a little bit of a cleft that comes through here and it, maybe it separates right through there. So there's like a little bit of a highlight right there. We'll darken this area. And there's a, if you notice, there's a, a little transition area. Normally when we get to the bottom at the, of the painting, we like to have it a bit darker. Well, in, in, in this case, in order to contrast the dark areas here, we're going to go a little bit lighter. Just a little bit, not a lot. We're just kind of insinuating uh, a, a, a glow or a, a menacing glow or some kind of, some kind of light from, from underneath. I just thin my paint just a little bit and you can see um, a bit of a difference that it makes when it goes on, sticks to the canvas a little bit better. And you're just working back and forth at this point, just working back and forth with your values and paying attention to your, to your inspiration piece. There was a certain point where you can take um, what you think you know and what you see and skew that a little bit based on what it is that you're trying to accomplish. Some of this stuff I'm just going to speed through because just putting paint on the canvas, I'm not doing anything special. I am paying attention to my, my highlight areas. I want to lose this edge, it's called losing an edge. I want the edge of this to kind of just blend off into the, into the background. And I'll do the same thing over here on the other side. Right down here where it starts to lose contrast a little bit. We'll just blend that right off. It imposes uh, space and distance uh, when we when we do that. And I'm using, using oh you can see I'm using the side of my brush like this in the tip. And what that's doing, it's going to put in a little bit of uh, texture for me, similar to when we do landscapes. And some of that stuff will end up blending out and painting over, but it's just putting in paint thicker in some areas. Remember, think of these things as shapes, right? So this is a cone, and you have light coming down. Think of how the light may hit some of these folds on the skin, how they may transition off. What's your height? What's your highlight? What's your hot spot? Remember also, whites aren't white. Just because you look at white and you think that you see white, 
and doesn't mean that it is white. You need uh, you need the darkness in order to show that show that white or the brightness. And if everything is bright, nothing's bright. This spot right through here, it's almost a lost edge. I wouldn't consider it a lost edge. You can kind of blend it, but there is a distinction between the shadow of the mouth and the outside of the body here. Just work on your steps as you go through this. Change up the color flavor every now and again, as it makes sense. Okay, this is, a, this is a, a rigger brush here. It's got the long, skinny bristles. It can hold a lot of paint. So I, I thinned out my paint a little bit and got my brush to a nice chisel point. So I need to darken this area in here. So I know I have some white on there and this is part of the reason why you put darks down first because you can see now if I'm putting down this dark, it's getting muddy, but that's okay. I, I need it to be kind of that color. This is going to take a little bit longer than standard my standard video, so I don't want to keep you guys for all this mundane stuff. Um, I will post my final picture when I get it, when it's when it's done. Um, but you see the idea of it, and I think this is turning out. I'm in a I'm in a good spot. I'm in a good position. Um, I like this, and I think we'll end up looking really cool when it's all done. Uh, And then you just keep on doing this for the entire thing. Use your, use your reference to go in and, and we'll put in the, the swimmer. We'll block in the, the sky. And uh, once this is dry, I'll probably go in and put the bubbles around the mouth to add a little bit more detail. Uh, so I'll, yeah, I'll post some additional images once this is, once this is, uh, once this is done. But for the most part, I wanted to show you that.
Tools are tools. They exist to make what you want to accomplish easier. They don't make you a fraud. Look, chances are you don't make your own pencils or grind your own pigment. You'll go out and you'll buy it already made. It's easier. It's more convenient. And it doesn't make you any less of an artist by doing it. In the end, if you use a projector or a camera lucida, it's your brush strokes, your color choices, your style that comes through. It's your creativity. Don't be stifled by someone's opinion. Express yourself how you want to. If you want to see something special or have a question, drop me a line. Let me know. Keep studying, keep practicing, and go on and create something awesome. You can find inspiration anywhere. Don't be afraid to look. I'll see you next time.